Hi, this is Mark from www.alternativeinvestmentinfo.com. I'd just like to thank you for looking at this presentation. I would like to introduce to you some alternative investments, which are investments that your financial advisor doesn't want you to know about. Why consider alternative investments? Well, as most people know at the moment, there are low interest rates for savers in, in the UK at the moment, less than 1% on current accounts, and maybe 2% if you're very lucky. Inflation is also over 5% at the moment. So if you hold cash, you're actually losing money every month. Also, you may have noticed that the stock market is very volatile currently, and as the FTSE 100 is still no higher than it was in the year 2000. So there have been no real returns for over 10 years. House prices have also dropped from 2007 by about 30% in real terms. Your financial advisors are still telling you to invest for the long term. They're still providing the same advice that they always have, but the investment landscape has changed quite considerably. Why would they do that? Well, in most cases, they get high commissions from delivering poor returns to you. And also, most professional money managers still make their high, re high returns from your money, but deliver you very poor returns. So what can the retail investor do? Well, my suggestion to you is to look at alternative investments. But the question I'm, you may ask yourself is, why haven't you heard about alternative investments? Well, mainly because there are no commissions earned by your average financial advisor for suggesting these to you as an investor. Also, in the mainstream financial press, they don't receive any of their advertising revenue from introducing these investments to you, the retail investor. They earn their money from the financial services industry, which is investing in bonds, unit trusts, and the traditional uh, financial products, which have not done us much good in the last few years. And of course, the system is designed to funnel all of your investment funds into the financial services sector so they can make their profits at your expense. So what should the retail investor do? Well, I think you should start to look at alternative investments. And there are many which, although they're considered alternative, are actually coming into the mainstream now. Gold, everyone's heard about gold. Um, forestry is one you may not have heard of, but is very um, widely held in other European countries and is now available to retail investors in the UK and elsewhere. Biodiesel, obviously with the need to cut down the amount of oil we consume, this is a one for the future. Carbon credits you may not have heard of, and I'll explain a bit more about those in the future. Agricultural land, even today as we speak, the population of, of the world is going to over 7 billion. So agricultural land is going to be at a premium for the provision of food in the future. And solar power. Solar power will enable us to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, fuels and cut down our greenhouse gas emissions. And the thing is, a number of these investments now are actually able to be invested in via a self-invested personal pension here in the UK and probably similar pension products overseas. So, gold. Well, gold actually isn't a particularly um, non-traditional investment anyway. If you look at gold, the price of gold has risen by about 640% in the last 10 years. Um, it can be purchased within your SIP, and if you buy it through your SIP, you would get a discount of 40% through your tax relief if you happen to be a higher rate taxpayer. Also, with a lot of information in the press about inflation increasing and, and interest rates being very low, that the holding of gold is a very sensible thing to do at this point in time. Forestry. Now forestry is a bit more unusual to the UK investor, but saying that it has been invested in by the pension funds and other institution, institutional investors for over a hundred years. And the amount that you need to actually invest in the forestry is actually quite small at 3,100. The returns that you can generate from investing in forestry can be around 11% and can be higher depending on the price uh, rises of uh, legal wood at this point in time. The investment time periods for forestry used to be up to about 25 years but with the genetic modification and the fact that forests are now being planted in more 
tropical areas, the growth period for maximum returns has been reduced to only 16. And again, this is an investment which has been considered suitable for uh, in including in your SIP pension by a number of different SIP providers. Biodiesel. Biodiesel is the oil that is produced from plants. What happens is the plant is squeezed and an oil is produced from that plant which can then be mixed with other um, flammable liquids to create a fuel that can be used either for energy production or for even fueling cars. In fact, Trotropha has been tested in jet engines with Air New Zealand. Again, the minimum investment for this type of product is £3,250 and that entitles you to a 45 year lease on the land which will generate annual returns after about three years up to around 20% and that can only go up if the price of oil increases as it most likely it will do over the years to come. And again, this product has been reviewed by a number of SIP providers and it is considered acceptable to include this within your SIP pension. Investing in carbon credits. All countries need to reduce their greenhouse gases over the next 10 years. This is what most countries in the world signed up to at the Kyoto um, pro uh, Protocol uh, meeting recently. The carbon market via the clean development mechanism helps achieve these goals. Carbon credits can be purchased for about £4,500 and that means that you can earn a return of about 30% on your holding. This one you can't invest in via a SIP at present, but many SIP providers are now reviewing this to see whether it can be included in the future. That's mainly because the regulation within this market is still in its infancy and needs to go slightly further before it will be considered an acceptable investment product. Agricultural land. The world is suffering from a shortage of food and as I've mentioned previously, the, the population is at 7 billion and it's projected to go to 10 billion by the year 2100. So therefore money is now needed to invest in agriculture to increase the food production yields. Investing in agricultural land can be done for as little as £1,950 and this can achieve annual returns in terms of the cash generated from the product from the land at about 15%. You also benefit from the fact that as the yield on the agricultural land increases, the value of that land would also increase, which means that you could earn a 7% increase per annum just on the value of the land itself. This has been looked at by a number of SIP pension providers and again can be now purchased via a SIP. Investing in solar power. Most governments again have got targets to generate 20% of their energy from renewable sources by 2020. Here in the UK and across Europe as well, many countries are encouraging individual investors to either invest in solar panels on their own roof or alternatively on other people's roof uh, to help generate that percentage of 20%. You can invest in solar panels for around £13,000. The benefit of this is that your annual returns will be around 8% a year in year one and over the years that would increase as inflation goes up. Also, you, if you are the homeowner, you will also benefit from cheaper electricity bills as some of your electricity generation you'll use in, within your house. This is a tax-free income, especially if it's fitted to your own house. So in summary, all the above investments that I've shown you will show double digit returns over the next decade. They are not reliant upon the volatility of the stock market and make an ideal diversification from a standard portfolio that you may have currently. This is a long term investment and this will help boost your future retirement plans. And the advantage of this is that you know more about these investments than your traditional financial advisor ever will. In summary, this is the sort of monies that you require to invest in the um, products I've mentioned. You will also see the returns that can be generated and the number of years over which these returns can be, can be earned. And also I've identified currently which ones can be uh, input into a self-invested person pension and those that cannot be. If you'd like to know more, please visit us at www.alternativeinvestmentinfo.com.